Hello and welcome to Center for Victory's podcast of your best day yet at Center for Victory. We're here to help unlock, reinforce, and enrich relationships through personal and professional development. I'm Eric Guy, Chief Victory Officer here at the Center for Victory. With me is a very special guest. And return offender, uh, Miss Lorian Poutier. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to uh, actually be doing a couple of these with us uh, since you're. Can we call it semi-retired? Is that is that the correct word now? Well, I guess what my husband just informed me is it's called in transition. In transition. <laughs> okay, so um, you know maybe you could fill us in for what you've been doing a little bit uh, till now. Uh, just tell us what you're doing because I think it'll. It'll help when we get into your, into some of these podcasts with you. Um, you know, we've planned out quite a few uh, with you just to give us some some tips of things. Uh, so you and I have talked. You know, the first one that we'll be talking about today is obviously uh, values and ethics, which is I think very important. Um, but before we get too deep into this, Lorianne, can you just kind of run down? Uh, your background and what you're in transition doing right now. Sure, sure. I'll do that in the the uh, the, the 30-second elevator speech, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm the former found one of the co-founders and COO of IntegraCare, which is a uh, senior living company operating independent living, assisted living, and memory care in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. And uh, I started the business with my partner, Rick Irwin, uh, 23 years ago, and Rick and I worked together for, for close to 30 years, and we sold the company last year, and uh, since that time, I'm obviously, I've been re- retired, so to speak, but in transition, um, and really, my my background is HR. Uh, I'm a lover of people, what makes them tick, how, how to motivate, how to help people be the best they can be. Um, and so that hasn't changed because Integra Care is no longer part of my my daily routine. Um, and I'm very focused on the younger generation uh, because at Integra Care, you know, the primary team member was a female uh, under the age of 30, oftentimes, you know, a single parent, oftentimes still trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. Um, and I saw such an opportunity to be, uh, you know, a beacon of hope. Uh, a guide, uh, maybe to help people see their potential that they don't even see in themselves. So that's pretty much what I'm motivated to do now and uh, have several causes that I'm kind of passionate about. But right now I'm working with Junior Achievement and we're working on a uh, program called She Leads, She Learns uh, Empowerment Summit, which is focused on high school girls, you know, ages nine, you know, grades nine through 12, and really. Uh, helping them think about themselves as it relates to who they are today, how to build upon that. And again, uh, you know, ethics, values, beliefs about yourself, how to be the best person you can be. Um, Because I will say, you know, we all have our God-given talents and that is my God-given talent. You know, so I feel I didn't used to realize it, but then once you do realize it about yourself, I feel very blessed to have that because it's such a platform to, to grow and it really has helped me be, you know, who I am in my own skin. So I'm hoping to help other folks see that in themselves. Yeah. And then, so we'll just, you know, we'll kind of get into this now. Um, and this is one of the things, and you know, this, cause I've told you, but I've always appreciated about you, but you know, it, it came up in quite a few conversations last week um, with, with people, you know, CEOs, presidents, just asking me, I don't know why it came up so much, but three or four different ones, just, hey, look, you know, can I do this being the kind of person that I am, right? And how do, you know, I don't want to deviate from who I am. And how do I, you know, how do I do that and be true to myself? So where do, where do you think what's so important to about knowing where you stand, your values and ethics for you, from your perspective? For me, it has been my freedom um, through my whole life and and honestly, my career in that um, it's funny. I just had my retirement dinner uh, a couple of weeks ago and the greatest compliment, you know, several people gave me a, a roast or a toast. But one of the toast comments, uh, what the person said was, um, what you see is what you get. 
It's, you know, the Lori Ann to her family, the Lori Ann to her friends, the Lori Ann at work, they're all the same Lori Ann. And for me, that's been my freedom. Like, I don't think about, oh, I'm going to work today. I have to, you know, not talk about what I did this weekend because everybody at work might not approve. Or when I'm at home discussing some decision I had to make at work that maybe was unpopular, having people at home going, oh, really? You know, that doesn't seem very nice. You know, did you really have to do that? So I think for any leader, it's the, it's the ability to be true to yourself, but you have to meet your people where they are. Mm -hmm. You don't get to say, well, this is who I am. So they're just going to have to take me like I am. You have to say, okay, here are the core skills, values, beliefs, uh, ethics that I have. Um, these are my people. So how do I take this and figure out what, where, what they're thinking and find a way to productively meet them in the middle. So for me, it was always stay true to where you came from, stay true to who you were. My dad was a blue collar guy. He was not educated. He didn't want any newfangled educational concepts in front of him. But what I knew is he treated his people right. He treated his customers right. You know, as kids, we thought some of his customers were not the nicest people, but he was loyal to his customers. He felt like, Hey, you gave me business when I needed it. So I'm going to go out of my way for you. And as I got to be older in my life, I began to see the wisdom in the way he looked at the universe. And honestly, even though he struggled in his business in the later years, he was true to himself to the bitter end. And people, he was that person that people wanted to be around. Mm -hmm. And so I think for a leader, you have to have some degree of charismatic appeal you just do because you have to be able to engage folks but more than that they want to know that you are who you say you are that you stand for the right things um and that you know when you know, profits are important but nobody wants to know that your decisions are all in the interest of profit yeah and not in the interest of people and sometimes that's a delicate balance yeah so i mean you you answered it somewhat but for those that, that might not be paying attention uh, to the actual question here, what would be your advice on how to go about learning what your values and ethics are? I would say you have to, first of all, think about, um, you have to reflect on your life. And I think in general, you have to be a reflective person. So what are, what are those things that you are, you know, your non-negotiables? Okay, what do you stand for? What will you absolutely not tolerate and what must be present, present for you to be successful or for you to feel like you're being true to yourself? And you have to know what those things are. When you know those, when you are faced with decisions that are counter to that, you immediately call upon your core to tell, you know, that, that speaks to you about who you are and have that conviction enough to say, you know, either, yes, I'm going to be a part or no, I'm not. If you don't reflect on yourself, you don't think about in your life what you've done well, or maybe bad, maybe you did something that was terrible, that wasn't good. Thinking about that thing and, and thinking about maybe your regret and what you would have done differently if faced with that same thing again. Because once you do that and you kind of cement who you are in your mind, and it's generally reinforced by what other people say to you, uh, parents, teachers, guidance counselors, you know, and work colleagues, et cetera. When you're faced with a decision that's counter to that, it's not even a thought. It's, it's who you are and you do what you think is the right thing. Um, even later, when you look back on it, when you know yourself and it really does come from study reflection. And then I, I'm, I'm going to say this um, reading, you don't have to believe everything you read. But reading is the is the pathway to imagination. And it really makes you think about, oh, I had a situation similar to that. And here's what I did. And kind of retool yourself so that you can be a better person versus really the idea of just take me as I am. We always have to be looking for if we want to be somebody better, then you have to understand what it is about yourself that you want to improve. Yeah. So and you've already answered a little bit of this next question. Um, but if you could just kind of elaborate on it, why is it important to align with your values in life and in business? 
Um, I think the greatest answer I can give you is one word and it's freedom. Yeah. You know, intellectual, personal freedom. And I have loved my career, even though it's been extremely hard. And that is primarily due to the freedom that I have. And I would say to you that, you know, there was a time, I'll just give you a very quick story. Um, when we started Integra, we were just getting ready to start Integra Care and we worked for uh, another company and our shareholders uh, were more interested in money. That was just a fact. And uh, so Rick and I decided to, to quit and start our own business. At the same time, my husband and I were building a house and we were trying to sell a house. So we had two mortgages <laughs> and you know, while two mortgages are stretching us, I'm going to come home and say, Oh honey, I want to quit my job. Um, but what, what, what kind of forced that was we were looking to buy the company that we worked for because the shareholders were aging. They were no longer interested in investing. We felt like to have a company that people wanted to work at, there had to be reinvestment. Um, so what happened is the shareholders never thought we would leave. So when we resigned and they saw Rick, who was my business, who's my business partner, uh, was my was the CEO of that company. When they saw Rick was going to quit, they came to me and they said, we know Rick is going to quit, but we're going to offer you to be the CEO uh, and we're going to pay you more than Rick is making. OK, so they thought that would be the clincher. And that was, you know, at that time. At this time, it still was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know where this came from, but out of my core, I guess, I said, there is not enough money in this world for me to stay. And, you know, got my husband, you know, to support that we're not going to have any income <laughs> of mine, but we're going to we're going to do this. And we resigned from the company. Now, when I look back on that, it wasn't anything I thought about. But I was so used to just being true to who I am and I know what I know and I'm not going to work for somebody who's just basically throwing a bunch of money at me uh, because they want what they want, but they're really not interested in improving lives for their employees. And, and so the flip side of that, maybe like the, the last question here on, on this topic here, uh, what would happen like this is, that was a really good story. What would happen if one doesn't develop those things in one's life? I think I know the answer to it, but. I believe if one doesn't develop the, the true sense of, of your core values and beliefs, I think you live a life of conflict. You know, many people um, are just constantly anxious, um, constantly perseverating over, okay, I, this is what I'm doing at work. Okay, I got to do this for work because you're somebody different at work than you are at home or than you are with your friends. And I think life is eaten up by trying to figure out what you wanna be. And the reality of that is that everybody knows it anyway. People can see, and actually without mentioning a name, I do know somebody um, who, who unfortunately fits this description. This is a person who is very, very well off, um, who is wonderful to his friends, I mean wonderful, but who treats his employees horrifically um, and is in general, not a very nice person, known universally as not a nice person. And, you know, it's intriguing to me because I kind of go, what must your quiet moments be like? So for me, what, what I would say is it's freedom. And in your quiet moments, don't you want to enjoy being in the moment? I mean, I can enjoy being on this yeah. podcast with you because I have nothing cluttering my brain I mean, I'm not perfect by any stretch, right. but I know I've been true to who I am, you know, each day. So I can move on to the next day without, you know, constant stress. Good. Um, so as we wrap this up, Lori, and just some tips, and I want you to think like, you know, because you, you mentioned um, you're in this program with with young women, too. So maybe make the tip, tips a little bit more specific uh, to them as well. But it's, this could, could be in general, but I think, you know, what, what tips would you say coming out of here, you know, two or three, hey, takeaways that you need to make sure you're doing as you build your life and career? I think number one is um, obviously the, the, the parental situation is important. So not everybody has the benefit of that, which is unfortunate, but 
I would say to each person, you obviously have to look to your family um, for, you know, what has happened in your life, what, what feels good about that and what you would, you know, you would do differently. Secondly, as, especially as a teenager, uh, surround yourself with people that bring out the best in you. You, you kind of see your potential when you have people that champion who you are, um, versus you feeling like you have to keep adjusting yourself to fit in with a certain crowd of people. You are good enough who you are. Um, you want people that are going to make you even better. And I think as a teenager, that is so hard. And I, you know, just a quick, in high school, I was, um, I was in a couple of advanced placement classes, but I generally hung out with popular people. So, you know, in those classes were the Brainiacs um, and Laurie Ann. And one of my teachers at the time said to me, I did really well on an exam. And she said to me, instead of saying congratulations, she said, you did great. I can't believe it because you don't belong here. Okay. Oh, wow. Because I was seen as hanging out with people that were more gregarious and out in the social scene and all of that good stuff. Well, I remember how hurt I was by that and actually thought about saying to my parents, I don't want to be in those classes. Um, and I think that's every teenager's way of feeling. So you kind of have to build yourself by building who's around you. Um, and also, I think you have to face things that you've done wrong with truth. In other words, you, you made a really bad decision. You lied. Uh, you did something dishonest. Don't think, oh, I got away with it. But you, you kind of want friends and family that, that kind of challenge you to, to be better. And I guess the last thing I would say is it's never too early to look for a mentor. Okay, a mentor doesn't have to come to you and say, hey, I see great potential in you. A mentor could be somebody you admire, something you read, someone you see on social media, uh, someone from this podcast, anything like this. It, do not be afraid to reach out and say, hey, I watched your podcast or hey, I read your book and it really touched me. You know, could we connect? Um, because that's how those relationships are forged. And nobody wants to mentor somebody more than the person that wants to be mentored. So mentors are huge. Yes, that, that's such, such a good point. I'm going to end it on that because I, I believe that wholeheartedly. Um, so that's all for today, gang. Uh, thanks for watching, listening. Uh, I'd also appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button if you want to get notified when we post again. Lori Ann's going to be on for several uh, more podcasts. Looking forward to those discussions. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, centerforvictory.com. And just remember, wherever you're at, wherever you're, whatever you're doing, make this your best day yet. We'll see you soon.